My fellow Apple enthusiasts and non-Apple enthusiasts, everybody is welcome. Apple just wrapped up their October 2013 keynote and guys, they announced a crap ton of products ranging from the MacBook Pro to the Mac Pro to the iPad, iPad Mini, OS X Mavericks, iLife updates, iWork updates. This is probably the biggest update, well, keynote I should say, this year. It was huge. So for this video, I'm gonna concentrate on three things. OS X Mavericks, MacBook Pro, and Mac Pro. Let's get started. Now first up is OS X Mavericks, and I just gotta say, it's available for free as of today. Yes, you can go right into the Mac App Store and update from Mountain Lion to OS X Mavericks, just like that, for completely free. And that right there is awesome. Props to Apple for keeping it free. Bump. Now, of course, I'm not going to be able to experience Mavericks on my Mac Pro because it doesn't support it. Why? That's beyond me. I've, I mean, I've upgraded the graphics card twice. It has a crap load of RAM in there now. And my MacBook Pro, I think from 2008, supports it. So if that supports it and my current Mac Pro, which has much better specs, doesn't, what, what is wrong with that? I don't understand. But either way, at least I will get to experience it somewhat in a mobile fashion. All right, so moving on and speaking of mobile, let's talk about the MacBook Pro. Pro. Now obviously I'm not a huge fan of the MacBook Pro because I don't need it and I don't use it on a daily basis, but still this is a solid update. First up is the 13 inch MacBook Pro. By the way, I will be referencing to my notes below because the keynote literally just ended me uh, minutes ago. So anyway, the 13 inch MacBook Pro now weighs 3.46 inches, yeah inches, pounds. It's thinner at just 0.71 inches. It has nine hours of battery life, which is awesome. The flash storage, also known as SSD, is up to 60% faster. It has a Thunderbolt 2 port, as expected, and it sells for $12.99, which I believe is $200 cheaper than it used to be, and it's available for shipping today. That was kind of dramatic, I just, yeah. But seriously guys, $200 cheaper than it previously was. That's a huge deal, especially if you're a pro on the go. And don't forget, nine hours of battery life, that's insane. So not only are you getting a professional workstation on the go, but you're also getting kick-ass battery life, all that for $200 cheaper at just $12.99. If you ask me, that is damn impressive. Okay, so obviously I didn't concentrate on all the specs such as the processor and RAM and stuff. You can go to Apple's website for that information. But moving on, let's talk about the 15 inch MacBook Pro. It's just like the 13 inch MacBook Pro, except you're gonna get eight hours of battery life instead of nine. But regardless guys, let's be honest here. Eight hours alone is damn impressive. Is that the second time I've said damn impressive? If so, I don't mean to repeat myself. This is just fascinating to me, clearly. And now the 15 inch MacBook Pro starts at $19.99, so exactly $2,000. And yes, I should say both those models, as like previous models, are Retina displays. Seriously guys, Retina is nothing to gawk at. I mean, it completely changes your experience with technology. It's exactly why I still have the full-size iPad third generation and not the iPad mini first generation because I just cannot stand that non-Retina display. It really does make that huge of a difference. It really, really does. But I'll talk about that in my other video because trust me, I have some good things to announce. Well, not announce, I mean, I don't work for Apple but you know what I mean. All right, let's talk Mac Pro. Now, as you probably know, Apple teased the Mac Pro throughout the summer, I believe during WWDC, and people left and right were just amazed. Whether it's through the insane specs that are gonna come with this thing, or whether it's the awkward form factor that looks like a trash can. I mean, you really can't argue Apple for trying something new, and I'm fully behind them with this. I mean, sure, expandability kind of sucks, but is that really gonna hold pros back from purchasing this thing? I don't think so. So Apple did unveil a bunch of specs today and release date and price and stuff, so let's talk about it right now. The Mac Pro will have an Intel Xeon E5, but you do have the choice of getting a quad, six, eight, or a 12 core architecture. Now for me personally, I've been using an Intel Xeon quad core for at least five or six years now, and it's gotten me by pretty well but obviously I could use this update, but unfortunately I don't really have the budget for that nowadays, at least as of this video, but who knows, maybe I can afford it eventually, or perhaps I can even get a sponsor on board. 
So if any companies or brands out there are interested in sponsoring a Mac Pro, I can promise you right now, it will be well worth it. Trust me, it will be very well worth your investment. Okay, so getting back on track, it is 1866 megahertz of DDR3 RAM. It is dual GPUs, otherwise known as the AMD Fire Pro. It is flash storage via PCI Express, which is very interesting. And by the way, that is user accessible, which is a very good thing because, like I said in the beginning of this portion of the video, the Mac Pro is not very expandable in terms of internal upgrades, but the fact that you can upgrade the PCI Express SSDs yourself, that is a good pro to keep in mind. You have six ports for Thunderbolt 2 expansion, as well as four ports for USB 3.0 expansion. And get this, but this is not news to me. I mean, I featured this over at MacProUpgrades.com months ago but this brand new Mac Pro can support up to three, yes, up to three 4K displays simultaneously. Guys, three 4K displays. Just hooking up one 4K display to my Mac Pro alone would be nergasm worthy. Just imagine three 4K displays. That is just jaw-droppingly incredible. And this right here is proof. This is a quote from a video professional, I'm not sure of the guy's name, but he said the new Mac Pro makes real-time 4K video editing a reality. And then another professional came out and said this, the new Mac Pro cuts my editing time exponentially. Okay, so the new Mac Pro does start at $29.99, yes, $3,000 US dollars, which isn't as insane as I expected because I saw rumors saying that it could cost at least $3,500, but I was really hoping and predicting for a 2,500 baseline price. But regardless, $3,000 isn't that insane to professionals because let's face it, these pro companies and pro individuals are making a lot of money. Now me personally, I'm not making enough money to just buy a Mac Pro and not think twice. This is the kind of thing that I would have to finance and plan my payments carefully, which is why I'm considering the iMac but again, if there are any sponsors out there that want to make this possible for me, not only would I greatly appreciate it, but I would make it worth your while. Seriously, I would promote your brand and so many videos of mine. I would make the investment more than worth it. I'm just throwing that out there, so let me just keep that there and see if I get any responses via my website over at daviddefranco.com, which is linked right below. And now finally, the brand new Mac Pro is available in December. So yes, definitely later than we expected, but still, it's coming out before 2014. So who knows, this can make a good Christmas gift to yourself if you have $3,000 to spend, at least, and if you're into professional work like I am. And by professional work, I don't mean like Pixar editing, but I do need that professional workspace. I mean, I'm not your typical iMovie editor nowadays. I mean, I do work with professional video clients on a regular basis, so this could be worth it in the long run. All right, those are my updates for the MacBook Pro, the Mac Pro, and of course, let's not forget OS X Mavericks. Stay tuned for my next video, in which I talk about the iPad and iPad mini with Retina display. Yes, it's finally happening. Guys, I'm just gonna save my nerdgasms for my next video, so I'll see you then.